I'm finishing up a series that I started. It's just a two sermon series and I'm calling it the numbers of giving. The numbers of giving. And the first number was 10. We talked about that the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Today we're talking about the number one, 10 and one. And uh, we'll have these available for you after service. And uh, I think we're giving them away. No, wait, wait, let me rewind that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, they will be available for $7. Amen. Uh, immediately following the service. Uh, I, I just believe that for many of you, you really have not tapped into the power of giving yet. In fact, I know it. I see it in the spirit of God. And, and this is the next frontier for you spiritually. There's a part of God's heart that I don't fully get until I become like him and become a giver. There's a part of God's involvement that I don't understand until I become a giver. So let's go to God in prayer. Father, we love you. We thank you for today. Will you take these moments that we share, use them for the extension and improvement of your kingdom family. Give me unique insight to share your word with crystal clarity, with anointing. And with power, do something that I could never do. Kingdom of God, visit our hearts and bring forth the fruit of righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. Because we know that's what you're about. You want us to be more righteous. You want us to be more joyful. You want us to have more peace. And this is what kingdom life is about. And we realize that a part of that is training our hearts to give to not attach ourselves to the temporal realities of this life, but to throw ourselves upon you and surrender. In Jesus' name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. One. When it comes to giving, there are two numbers that mean more than all the others. Ten and one. Ten is the percentage that God wants us to give him of our income. Ten is the tithe. It represents 10% of all that we receive, not just in salary, but in bonuses. Amen. In, in, any com, in income of any sort and any variety. And from the, the beginning of the scriptures to the end, we see that this is not the end point, but the beginning point of Christian giving. God says, I want you to give me 10. And I don't want you to give it to me as a matter of convenience. I want you to give it to me as a lifestyle choice. In fact, God says, I want you to test me in this. It's the only time in the scripture where God says, I will submit to your test. Give me 10 and see if I won't give you so much more that you won't miss what you deposited in kingdom life. And many of you are taking that test. I've, I've received emails from you. We challenge you to just test God for the rest of the year. We, we said that you're probably going to get two, three paychecks before the year is out. And give God 10 of, of, of the, that paycheck. Give him 10% of those paychecks. It's the best time to do it because it's the holiday season. And holidays are holy days. Christmas is Christmas. Go get a clue. And so it's about Christ. And so it's the best time to test God. And many of us have patted ourselves on the back because we've been giving God five faithfully. But God says, I want you to bring the whole tithe. You're not testing God until you bring him the whole tithe. The whole tithe. And the only time to do that is now. You don't say to God, okay, God, I'll obey, you. I'll obey you, but wait a minute. You do that now. And so 10 is a number of great importance. The other number is one. One is the priority that God is to have in our financial life. You see, whenever God is number two or three in our budget, then we've placed some other God, little g, before him. How could God be number two? In what world does that work where God is number two in any arena of life? You see, one secures the 10 for God. 
You see, if God is number one, then giving him the ten is not a problem because I choose him first with anything that comes into my hands. And so the only reason why I would not give him ten is because he's not one. But if I can get him to be one, giving him ten is just automatic. Because he's one. And so one and ten. And, and that's what the text is telling us. This text reminds us that the only place for God to be in any area of our, of our lives, but specifically, he's talking about giving, the only place, the only priority level for God to be is one. He's to be one in every arena of life because he's God. And anytime he's not one, then somebody has placed a small G God ahead of him. And that's what we see in this text. He says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your crops. Now, I need you to get this down because this is the principle that we have to download into our operating system in order to do this. I don't think that there's anybody here who would disagree with anything I've said thus far. How many of you just, you just have a problem with what I just said? You don't have a problem with what I just said, do you? No. The problem is, is that our instincts are not trained to give to God. We, we instinctively, by the culture, are taught to consume instead of contribute. And we believe that consumerism is better for us than contribution. Here it is. Take care of number. There it is right there. Who said that you were number one? You mean you... <laughs> You mean I'm more important than God? You are more important than God? You see, so we're taught to consume. And so we've got to download it in our operating system. And here's the principle. And this is the one that we've got to have as a part of our thought process, as a part of how we instinctively do life. And here it is. The first of everything belongs to God. If God is number one financially, anything that touches my hand, it belongs to God first. Whatever God wants me to give to him, I must give that first. The first of everything belongs to God. Why don't you say that with me? Say the first, the first. Of, everything of everything belongs to God. Belongs to God. Now, if, I, if that was a part of my operating system, then giving is just automatic. Because the first of anything that I get. Belongs to God. Anybody want to protest heaven over that? Anybody want to get upset with the giver over that? Every good and perfect gift comes down from the father of lights. And the first of everything belongs to God. Not just the first of some things. But the first of everything. It belongs to God. Not, not the second of everything, not what's left over from everything, but the first of everything, it belongs to God. Now, throughout the scripture, God reinforced this over and over and over and over and over and over. Did I say over? And over again <laughs> with his people. And he did this through the principle of first fruits and firstborn. We see that in Proverbs 3 9. And to understand how to put God first and why I put God first, you got to trace how God does it throughout the text, throughout the biblical record. He asked his people, no, 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 no. He told his people, I want you to give me the first fruits of everything and the firstborn of everything that comes from the womb. And so, first fruits has to do with an offering that was based upon the first yield of a harvest. Uh, this is an agrarian culture. And so whenever vegetation would grow on somebody's land and whenever fruit would grow from their trees, uh, obviously that would be a portion of uh, the harvest that would come out first. And God said, when you see the first yield of the harvest, when the first yield is ready, I want you to give me a portion of what you get first, even though you don't know how much is coming. I want you to give me the first fruits. And this is taught all, all over the Bible. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 19. Look at what it says. 
It says, bring the best of the first fruits of your soil, where? To the house of the Lord your God. That's it. That's all I want to talk about. Now, bring the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. Now, what's interesting is this. He didn't just say bring the first. He said bring the first and the, and the best. And so we give to God not only first, but we give to him our best first. And so they were to pick the best fruit, the best oranges, the best apples. And they were to give them to God first. Why was God doing this? He wanted to ingrain in their minds that the first of everything belongs to God. Now there's a related principle, the principle of the firstborn. Let the church say firstborn. firstborn. Now there were firstborn offerings that were to be given as well. God said the firstborn male, whether animal or child, is to be offered unto me. Understand, children and animals were regarded as sources of wealth. Again, it's an agrarian culture. Who worked the land? Animals. Not only did they work the land, but it was a source of wealth because they were a medium of exchange and a medium of prosperity. Children. This is an agrarian culture. Again, they worked the land. And so your children were your little employees. <laughs> and so the first had to be offered to God. This is in the Bible as well. This is God's way of saying the first of, of everything belongs to who? To me. First of everything is mine. Don't even think about taking it for yourself. It's mine. And we see this in the scripture as well. Exodus 13, 1 through 2. Listen to what it says. The Lord said to Moses, consecrate to me every firstborn male. The first offspring of every womb among the Israelites belong to me, whether what? Man or animal. So all of the animals, whenever you had a flock of lamb and a flock of cattle, the firstborn of any little animal family, firstborn of any woman, of any male animal, I mean female animal, the firstborn male had to be sacrificed to God as an offering. But the firstborn child had to be sacrificed as well. Now, that didn't mean you take your child to the temple and leave him there. But God said, you can take your, you can take your baby boy home, but I need you to know that he belongs to me too. And by giving him to me, you're actually giving all subsequent children to me because the firstborn consecrates all of the rest of the kids. So if you give this one to me, it's as if you're giving all of them to me. But I don't want you to leave them at the temple. I want you to take them home. But you are to give me an offering for the right to take my boy home. <laughs> and the offering was five pieces of silver. Now, this is a foreshadowing of Christ. Because you do know one day, Christ gave, God gave his firstborn Jesus to us. And God didn't spare him uh, from offering himself for us. Now, and look at this. So God gives his first and only son for us. And we are now to give the first of everything to him. Now, if he gave his first and not subsequent son's coming, but the first and only son to us, how could we not give the first of everything to him. The first fruits, the firstborn. The principle is really simple. God says the first of everything belongs to who? It belongs to me. It belongs to me. Now, this is deeply ingrained in the biblical record. It's deeply ingrained in the biblical record. In fact, we see it in the opening scenes of scripture. And in the opening scenes of scripture, Chapter 4 of Genesis, you check it out later. Here's what we learn through the story of Cain and Abel. How we are giving is a picture, usually, of how we're living. It's a picture, not only of how we're living, it's a picture of where we're going. It's a snapshot, oftentimes, of where we're going with God in the future. And so, if God is first, financially, then he's usually... At least I'm trying to make him first in every other room. 
But if he's not first financially, it, it's unlikely that I'm trying to make him first in the other rooms of my life. Giving is a picture of how you relate to God everywhere. Okay, you don't believe it. Cain and Abel, here's the story. Abel, the Bible says, had herds. He had flocks. And God wanted an offering. Abel gave him, and the, the, the text is very careful to say this. Abel gave to God the firstborn, fat portions from the firstborn of his flock. And God loved Abel's offering. He loved Abel's offering so much that he blessed him uniquely. The signature of God's blessing was on Abel's life, and his brother Cain got jealous. Anybody read? I got, I got three Bible readers, Cheryl. Anybody? Y'all don't, don't remember this story. Okay, so let me just tell it to you. Cain, on the other hand, Cain worked the land. And so he had land. And God said, Cain, I want an offering. The Bible says that Cain brought some of the fruit of the soil in the course of time. Now, now Moses was very careful in, in how he worded this. Now, listen to it, John and Lee. Uh, Cain brought some of the fruit of the ground in the course of time. Translation, he gave God what he wanted. He didn't give... He gave God what he wanted to give God. He didn't give to God first. And he didn't give to God his best. And as a result, Cain became angry. And the Bible says God said to Cain, why are you angry? Why don't you just obey? And then you wouldn't have a reason to be angry. Cain, because giving is a reflection of how I'm living, Cain did not repent. And his anger grew and spilled over from God to his brother. And so because he couldn't have God's favor, and he didn't want to make God first, his anger grew from God to God's people. And the Bible says he killed his brother. Now, now why is he doing all this? Because he's not blessed like his brother. Why is he not blessed like his brother? Because God ain't first like he is in Abel's life. And so he kills his brother. So he's angry at God. He's angry at his brother. He eliminates his brother. Then he gets angry in his job. Because God said, because of what you did, I'm going to curse the ground because of you. You're going to work and work the ground and weeds are going to keep coming up. You're not going to experience productivity in your life. You're not going to live the future that you want to live. And because he did not obey God and put him first. He did not claim the future that he wanted to claim for himself and the future he wanted to claim for his family. What, what does this teach us? It teaches us that our giving is a reflection of how we are living. If God is not first when it comes to your money, I assure you, God is probably not first when it comes to relationships. And God is not first when it comes to your emotional life. And God is not first when it comes to your occupation. Our giving is a reflection of how we're living and where we're going in the future. A.W. Tozier was right. He was right. We learn how to behave in the presence of God. Friend, if you don't obey him here, it's doubtful if you'll obey him out there. I want you to stop and consider maybe, maybe your revival, your personal renewal will begin with giving. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And so that says, my heart is running after my money. And so when I invest in God, I put more of my heart to God, in God. My emotions start engaging God more. Because my giving becomes a reflection of my living. <laughs> Y'all don't like this, but I'm preaching all of it. Oh God, I'm preaching every bit of it. Because you need it. I, I see it in your eyes. Could this be true? Could this be true? We're just going to be an average church if you don't get this. 
Because you're not going you're not, you're not to know God enough. Let, let me help you. you we're just going to be a very average church if you do not get this. Because you're not going to understand what we're doing. You're not going to get what we're doing. Now, I want to give you a picture because I want you to see this. I have a friend told me, give him a picture, Pastor. And I'm like, I like pictures. So I'll give, I give you a picture. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a picture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want you to see this. I've got 10 $10 bills, and I want them to represent your income. You walking with me? Okay. Mm -hmm. 30. Okay, now I want to ask you two questions. It's $100 here. How much is a tithe of this? $10. That's that right. So $10. $10 would be a tithe. Now here's the question that I need you to get. Because if you get this, you're going to walk away and you're going to get this message completely. And you're going to be able to plug and play it in your life. The question is, which 10? Which 10 is the tithe? Is it the one on the right? The one in the middle? Or the one on the left? See, the question is, which, which 10 belongs to God? The first 10, absolutely. But now let, let, me, let, me, let me make sure you understand what that looks like. Um, so, here, here's a good example. Let's say... You know, I need, I need to get another cell phone, you know, so I take this nine, get me a cell phone. And since I got 10 left, I'm going to go ahead and give God 10. Is that given to God first? Now watch this. You can actually give a tithe and violate the spirit of the tithe. You can give a tithe to God and violate the attitude of giving to God first. Because the only reason why you gave it is because you had enough to buy your cell phone. I'm going beyond the tithe here. I want you to see something now. I'm talking about truly putting God first. Okay, check this out. Let's say I do this. I'm going to cash this 10 in. This is the first 10. I'm going to cash it in for a five and five ones. And so, you know, I got a lot of bills, you know, so I'm going to give God this five, five one dollar bills. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this and see if I can make it for the next couple of weeks, the next month. And if I have enough, then I might give God the other five. Which 10 belongs to God? You see, the only way to do this in a God-honoring way, to give God the first of everything, the first fruits, and honor the, honoring the principle of the firstborn, is to give God the first 10. And that means if you write checks to pay your bills, that you write God's check first. Well, Pastor, it's Tuesday, and I won't be, to be at church until Sunday. Write the check anyway. <laughs> Because I don't want to write any check before I write God's check. If you lack financial discipline, you better be sure to write the check. In fact, don't just write the check. Get in your car. Go to the post office. If your bank account is messed up, go get a money order for God. You get a money order for everybody else. Okay, so are you telling me that your cell phone bill, that your mortgage is more important than the God who gave you the cell phone and the house? This means that if you do all your bill pay in an automated way, then you need to automate with God. You mean I do it in an automated way? I don't even have to think about it with everybody else. But with God, I got I to gotta reflect and see. 
and pray. I, I don't know if I should do that. The only 10 to give God is the first one. God says, I want you to give me 10, but I want it to be number one in the budget. I want it to be number one. And this is why a lot of us don't experience the, the, the true joy of tithing, even though some of us tithe. Because we just got, we just, God just blesses us with some change. And so we're just giving what we got, you know. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. Oh, yes, it is. So yes, it is. If, if he's first, it's huge. And so how do I give to God his 10 first, no matter what it is? I want to give that 10, that 10 to God. How do I do it? Well, the text gives us the way to do this. Gives us the way to do this. Who am I talking to already in this book? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who am I talking to, but you don't want to admit it? Okay, all right. <laughs> and friend, this has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with Great Mount Zion. It has, it's just everything about God. It's just about God. Now, it will help Greater Mount Zion, but at the end of the day, uh, God can help Greater Mount Zion any kind of way he wants to. You know, he can help Greater Mount Zion any kind of way he wants to. Okay, all right. So, so if that's the case, how do I do, and how do I do this? How do I live my life like this by giving God the 10 first? We see it in this text. We, we see the motivations for giving God the first 10 in the text. There are three of them, and I'm just going to give them to you real quick. You better walk with me because I'm going to be done in about 10 minutes. Maybe. Depends on if you say amen or not. Okay. I have the potential to be done in about 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, make, I make God number one, my number one financial priority because of this. Giving is worship. 